is not my intention to dwell upon it. Uh, instead, I want to talk to you of the future, the uh, fine, proud future uh, that we can build together. <clears throat> And if you elect me, I promise you a program of town improvements that we have needed here in Johnson Springs for a long time. A long time. Colonel, this meeting is pretty dull. Just listen, Bob, you might learn something. I already have. This guy can't make a speech. <laughs> Some of you may say, why should we elect you when Mr. Rexford has been councilman here for 20 years? But I say to you, it's time to change. Uh, time to, uh... Time to go home! Now, j just a minute. L sit down! Please, just a minute. Give him a chance. Oh, please, stay. He has something very important to say. Well, that's one way to adjourn a meeting. Yes, but not a way that does credit to the democratic process. Colonel, we only came to Johnson Springs for the baths, remember? Yes, but as Quintius Prutus said in the Roman baths, quad influminum est, labanta est. Which means? If you take a bath, you've got to get into hot water. <laughs> did a good job of messing up this clambic. They obviously didn't want the speaker to have his say. I wonder who they were. Well, whoever they were, they rate at least two pages and who's hoodlum. <laughs> oh, Mr. Rexford. I might have known you'd be here. Did a fine job breaking up my meeting. Bill, now, please. look here, Moore. I'm just as sorry about this as anyone. But for you to suggest that I'm behind it, well, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. We were both witnesses to this painful incident, and... I hope uh, you'll remember it when you go to the poll, sir. Well, young man... I know what you're going to say. It's a wasted vote, but it's not. Now, I haven't got a chance of winning. But a vote for me is a vote against Rexford's machine. Isn't that a rather defeatist attitude to take? Well... I remember when a very dear friend of mine was running for office. The stakes were somewhat higher, but the situation was similar. The public opinion polls had predicted a landslide in his opponent's favor. And I remember visiting him in the dead of night, a discouraged man sitting there playing his piano. And I said to him, it's never over till it's done. Harry? <laughs> the rest is history. What did you say your name was? I am Colonel Humphrey J. Flack, and this is my associate, Uthus P. Garvey. How do you How do? Do, you do? Now, about those hecklers, there's only one way to silence them. Don't let them in. Rally your forces and fight back. Get your party workers together and tell them to keep out all undesirable elements from your meetings. But we don't have any party workers. You see, we're doing most of the work ourselves. Oh, then well, you do have a problem. We could use any help we can get. And if you'd... Uh, now, look, Colonel, we just came here to rest. That's going to keep us pretty busy. Then it's time we relax with some hard work. <laughs> Excuse us, will you? Oh, Mr. Rexford. We were witnesses of that painful incident in the meeting room. Oh, that. Yes, uh, you showed great restraint. You acted like a true public servant. Well, thank you. Uh, Colonel Humphrey J. Flack, and this is my associate, Mr. Garvey. Are uh, you in politics? If you mean, do I hold office, no. But you've been in office. If every politician held office, who would there be left to run campaigns? <laughs> <laughs> uh, see you around, Ralph. Good night, gentlemen. Uh, Colonel, I'd like to have a talk with you sometime. Oh, certainly. Any time you're in the capital, drop in. Yes, <laughs> the, the capital? Uh, you, you spell it F-L-A-C-K? Yes, that's right. But in the newspapers, I'm always referred to as a source close to the administration. <laughs> well, it's nice to have met you. If I can help at all while I'm here, don't hesitate. Come, Garvey. Oh, oh uh, Colonel, uh, Colonel, there, there is something. I'm to deliver a speech tomorrow night. I'd like to get your opinion on it, if uh, I may read it. Certainly. Well, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen... Uh, tomorrow in your office in the town hall? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. See you then. Oh, well, thank you. Good night, Colonel. Good night. Well, 
You tossed in the ball, and I must say, he made a beautiful catch. Now we've got to make him fumble it. Colonel, whatever it is you're up to, don't interfere. He's running, and he's got the ball. He's got to have some sort of interference. Well, now to hear pearls of wisdom from Rexford. Colonel, I can't sit through another speech. Then stand up. That's what I mean, I can't stand it. Then sit down. Look, you don't even know if this guy is crooked. All we know is what Moore said. Maybe when Rexford has his say... He'll, he'll... have his say when he challenges Moore to a public debate. If that's your plan, he'll make mincemeat of that kid. I wonder. <laughs> Mr. Rexford, I know I'm early, but I just couldn't wait any longer. Well, thank you. Coming from you, Colonel... Uh... Oh, excuse me, Colonel Flack, Mr. Garvey. This is Miss Palmer, my confidential secretary. How do you do? I don't blame you for keeping her confidential. <laughs> what did I tell you, Miss Palmer? The Colonel has a real sense of humor. Yes, sir, as I said to myself this morning when I got up, I like that fellow. <laughs> Garvey, tell Mr. Rexford what I said about him this morning. <laughs> right to his face? Oh, well, well, let's hear the speech, shall we? Oh, yes, yes, of course, Colonel. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen... Uh, Mr. Rexford, I have the feeling that you think you're imposing on me. Oh, no. No? no. Ladies and gentlemen... Oh, that's much better. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... Always bear in mind that although you're only a small cog in the machine, unless all parts are functioning, the machine is worthless. Well, that's true, Colonel. But uh, let's face it, the big cogs in a machine get more oil. <laughs> Was I right? You sure were. About what? About this man. A man with real grassroots. A man with a common touch. The kind of man that I was referring to in the capital only last week. You were? Yes. Tell him what I said in that smoke-filled room. Open the window? <laughs> Sorry. As I said, what we need in this election is a man with a sense of humor. A man who can make people laugh, cry. A man like... You tell him. You tell him. That was your idea. <laughs> tell him. I'll show him. <laughs> Will Rogers. Now start your speech. Oh, I feel a little silly. I just want to get the feeling. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. I've got the feeling. Sit down. All right. How old are you? Uh, 52. A citizen? Oh, yes. Married? No. Uh, too bad. A first lady is very important in any campaign. First lady? It does have a nice ring, doesn't it? Colonel, you're not talking about running me for governor. One must learn to crawl before one can walk. I want to see you in action. Well, how about tomorrow night when I make this speech? No, I don't mean that. I want to see you under fire. I want to see him face to face with the issues. I want to see him make mincemeat of his opponent. You mean like a debate? Oh, that's wonderful. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I know. I'll challenge this moor to a public debate. Garvey? This man thinks on his feet. That's not easy. <laughs> More speeches. You object? You want my honest opinion? If you insist. I object. What would you rather do? Get out of here. You want to run? The sooner, the better. <laughs> sure. Ladies and gentlemen, at the insistence of both party candidates, I am serving as your moderator. I have examined the political situation here and weighed both candidates in terms of the issue. And I've come to this conclusion. What Johnson Springs needs is a third party candidate. <laughs> What did you do to me? Well, you said you wanted to run. I'm at a way, far, far away. Oh, I must have misunderstood. But now we are in it, we'll do our best. Go ahead and laugh. When the bills start coming in for all of this, it'll be my turn to laugh. Only I'll be crying. If you worry about a bill before it's due, you're already paying interest on it. <laughs> Garvey for councilman headquarters. Oh, I'm sorry, but Mr. Garvey is tied up at the moment. Colonel. Get that one, will you? Uh, Mrs. Who of the Women's Club? Garvey for Councilman Headquarters. Hello. Here's the estimate on the sky right. $650, that's fine. For that kind of money, I'll fly up there and do it myself. Sorry, keep it waiting. 
Oh, yes, Mr. Garvey will be delighted. Thank you. You'll be delighted to do what? Uh, what's that? Uh, oh, Miss... Uh... Uh, just a moment. Uh, how do I stand on progressive education? Mr. Garvey believes in progress in any form. <laughs> uh, miss, take a note, will you? Mr. Garvey will be addressing the Women's Club luncheon today. The right, Women's sir. Club? Well, what'll I say to him? We'll think of something. <laughs> Have you got the proof for the campaign blouses ready yet? Uh, can uh, Mr. Garvey speak at the Rotary Club dinner tomorrow? But by all means. If he'll be there. Then what'll I say to the Rotary Club tomorrow? Uh, just clean up what you say to the Women's Club today. <laughs> what? Where is the chairman of the Blotter Committee? She couldn't find a babysitter, Colonel, but she's promised to get here somehow. <laughs> How many of those blotters are you having printed? 250,000. What? Well, there can't be over 10,000 people in this town. You can't make a big splash with a pebble. Is the Blotter Distribution Chairman here? Oh, yes, Colonel. Have you lined up enough boys to pass out the campaign blotters? Oh, sure. When I told them you were offering five dollars per boy. <laughs> Where are you going? To pass out blotters. Mr. Garvey believes in the personal touch, but we can't spare him. Oh, a uh, Yes? What does Mr. Garvey think of the new dog catcher law? Who's calling? A dog owner. He's against it. He's against it. I've always just the practice of dog catching. Colonel, about this campaign blotter... Where have you been? The printer's been shouting for that corrected proof. Oh, I'm sorry, but I ran into two more possibilities. Oh, really? This is past the joking stage. Where is the money coming from to pay for all this? Well, I'll be. <laughs> Paid ads. <laughs> I don't know why I worry when you're around to protect me. Uh, what was that you said about two more possibilities? Oh, yes. Uh, Paul's Cafe yeah. and Mary's Five and Ten, but yeah. there's no more room. Yeah. Oh, but that's the blotter side. Yes, I know. It seems a shame to waste it. I wonder... <laughs> no. Well, you've done a splendid job. Rush it down to the printer. Yes? The cameraman is here. Oh, good. Where are the ladies? They're waiting outside. Splendid. Are you ready for us now? Just as soon as the cameraman is ready. Fine. Hmm, this job is suddenly getting interesting. Uh, pictures, Colonel, of me and the ladies? That's correct. How about a few kissing shots? They're always good. That's exactly what I had in mind. You all set? Oh, Garvey, would you stand there, please? That's right. <laughs> Come in, ladies, will you? <laughs> oh, what a lovely oh, baby. Hi, <laughs> and that one, would you stand there, please? And you, right just here? Uh, that's right, may I? Thank you. There you are, Garvey. Colonel. <laughs> All right, Garvey, do you want to try a dry run first? <laughs> Too late, Colonel. Well, Garvey, I've certainly made this town aware of your presence. And how? I can't go anywhere without being recognized. It makes me nervous. Oh. I just want to say one thing. If you thought Bill would quit, you've got another thing coming. Well, Mrs. Moore, I don't blame you for feeling upset. All this must seem rather strange to you. Not at all. Not strange at all. The names have changed and the faces, but the methods are the same. Well, all I ask is you have a little patience. Patience? No, then perhaps a little faith. It's a mighty odd word coming from your lips. I'm sorry, but I had to say that. Now I know what Benedict Arnold must have felt like. Why didn't you tell me we're only doing this for a husband's benefit? I wanted to, but I was worried. About what? You're liable to get elected. <laughs> How do I feel about Proposition 2? I feel the same as I do about Proposition 3. There isn't. Well, that's what this town needs. More propositions. <laughs> Where have you been? Down to the newspaper office. What's new? It's what's old that's more to the point. I've been checking on the record of your opponent. Rexford, what'd you find out? Well, in 1955, he had the main street of Johnson Springs repaid. Yeah. In 1956, he built a new high school. Yeah. In 1957, he built a community swimming pool. Sounds like a real go-getter. In 1958, the street cracked right down the center, the school sank on its foundations, and the swimming pool won't hold water. <laughs> Cheap cement, eh? Very. I also checked to find out if he owned any of the construction companies. Oh, did he? No, but they're owned by his cousins, his uncles, and his aunts. 
worked it through his poor relations, huh? Yes, Garvey, and that is nepotism. Sounds kind of crooked, too. He really took his time for a ride. Well, as an ancient Latin poet once said, in sign non quest non stultium stultatis. Which means? The road to good intentions cannot be paved with poor relations. <laughs> I don't think we have to redecorate completely. Well, I don't know how you feel, but this chair will have to go. And I think the light would be better if your desk faced north. Anything you say, Colonel, you're much better at these things than I am. Yes, this carpet wouldn't be so bad if it didn't clash so with the drapes. What do you think you're doing barging in here like this? Well, we're just making a little survey to see what changes we have to make. The election isn't over, and until it is, I'm still in office. There's such a thing as losing graciously. Well, I haven't lost, and I don't intend to, no matter what your connections are. I don't blame you for not wanting to give up all this. Give up all what? Do you see anything of value around here? I was referring to what was under the desk. Where? Or, to put it more pointedly, what's under the table. Get out of here before I throw you out. Oh, now, come now, Rexford. I've been in this game longer... longer than I care to remember. Gentlemen, the door is always open to you. Why don't you use it? I have a feeling we've worn out our welcome. I have a feeling that you're right. Of course, if Mr. Rexford doesn't want to play ball. What do you mean, play ball? You know, for a clever man, you're rather naive. Oh, Miss Palmer, would you excuse us for a few moments, please? It's quite all right, Gladys. You can talk in front of Miss Palmer. I feel sure you'll agree that with the votes split the way they are, Garvey has the election in the bag. I'm not so sure of that. And to be perfectly honest, Garvey doesn't want to be a councilman. He doesn't. Really? Well, of course not. We're not in this for glory, are we? No. With us, money is its own reward. <laughs> Why, Colonel, that's dishonest. I don't get it. But I do. Let me handle this. What's your proposition? At the propitious moment, Garvey will withdraw in Mr. Rexford's favor. In return, we make one simple request. What? The usual 50%. <laughs> what I did for Garvey, I'll do for you. Well, what do you say? Take it. Half a loaf's better than none. Especially when you're hungry. It's a deal. Gladys, uh, Miss Palmer, will you draw up an agreement? But a written contract? My word was always good enough in the capital. It should be good enough here. Now, you're going to see a campaign such as you've never seen before in your life. We're going to plaster every square inch of this town with your name. We'll blast it over the radio. We'll write it in the sky. And every hour on the hour, a sound truck will roll through this town singing your praises. <laughs> Did you hear that soundtrack? Go to sleep. I wonder who ordered it at 3 o'clock in the morning. Go to sleep. Did you? Good night, Garvey. <laughs> but, 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 madam, I had nothing to do with that soundtrack. In fact, I was... Uh, Mr. Rex, the doctor. Well, I didn't get any more sleep than you did. And let me assure you that I... Hello? Uh, hello? Oh, there you are. What are you trying to do, ruin me? But, sir, I assure you that... All right, sir, goodbye. These phones have been ringing ever since we got in. Do you realize you've turned everybody in this town against me? Mr. Rexford's office. Let's not exaggerate. Exaggerate? Exaggerate? Look at all these telegrams. People I was counting on. You made me look like an absolute fool. Yeah, but you helped. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye. Uh, Mr. Rexford, I'm not in the habit of taking refuge by blaming others. If someone made a mistake, and apparently someone did, I take full responsibility. Oh, that's swell. As my good friend Fiorello used to say, I don't make a mistake often, but when I do, it's a beaut. <laughs> Now, a crisis separates the men from the boys. Which are you? What do you mean? I say let's take hold of this disaster and turn it to our advantage. But how? I'll think of something. 
Yes? Suppose we get a soundtrack to go out and apologize to the entire community. Make them realize that you're big enough to admit your error. Make them realize... No, that's no good. That'll make them realize how mad they are. Of course! <laughs> you really think that Mr. Rexford is through in this town? I'd say so. And Garvey doesn't want to run? This is a real dilemma. There's only one answer. He's got to run. That's right. Yes, but he doesn't want to. I'm stubborn. I don't know what a soft touch this job is. Oh, I'll be honest with you. I've made a lot of money out of this. And whatever he's made, you can double. With him, you can triple it. No. Don't you see we're in a bind? You've got to run, or we'll all be out in the cold. It's no use. I've got a will of iron. Garvey, do it. My will's been bent. <laughs> but on one condition only. You must withdraw and throw your support to Garvey. We must be certain of victory. Agreed? Agreed, but our arrangement still stands 50-50, right? Whatever we get, you'll get. Then it's a deal, right? Well... It's a deal. My compliments, Miss Palmer. You're not only a secretary, you're also an operator. Never mind the flattery. We have to work fast. Yes, the election's tomorrow. We must have a rally tonight. Right. Gladys, get on the phone and make all arrangements. Uh, perhaps an announcement in the afternoon paper. Right. Call the paper. Uh, also on the radio. Right. Get on that. And your boys to pack the hall. Right. We may be a small pond around here, but there are still a few things you can learn from us. <laughs> Mr. Rexford, I hope I never cease learning. I suppose someone forgot to cancel their services. And so, my good friends, I hope you will understand why I want to lay down my burden and throw my votes to Uthus P. Garvey. Thank you. Good luck to you, Mr. Garvey. I'm sure you'll be elected. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Mr. Rexford for throwing his votes to my candidate, Euthus P. Garvey. And in turn, I am sure Mr. Garvey will be thanked for throwing his votes to Mr. Moore. <laughs> now, there is a candidate who will think of you first and himself afterwards. And since he is now the only candidate left, I move we elect him by acclamation. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? As I expected. <laughs> now may I remind you, you are citizens of a democracy, and votes are cast by secret ballot. All I ask is that when you go to the polls tomorrow, be careful how you mark that ballot. Thank you. <laughs> oh, not saying for tea and cookies? <laughs> Colonel, I... I said some terrible things about you. Will you forgive me? You must have said some terrible things about me, too. <laughs> ah, nice kids. Let's get up early tomorrow and mark our ballot for Bill Moore. We can't. We didn't register. Too bad. Well, as an ancient Chinese philosopher once said, Ming Toi Bolo Gai Yun Tu Wang. Which means... One can sometimes leave Mark without casting ballot. <laughs> It certainly becomes you, Bill. How does it feel? Well, I hope I'm up to it. Why, of course you are. You got the largest recorded vote in the history of this town. Got it right here. 11,450 out of a possible 11,451. Not bad. Well, somehow we just couldn't swing Rexford to our side. <laughs> These drapes have to go. They clash with the carpet. Or should we get another carpet? Now, Alice, really... Take my advice, Bill. Never get in the way of a woman with a new broom. <laughs> well, we must be on our way. Best wishes to both of them. Colonel, I, I, I wish I could express to you how grateful we are, but, well, anyway, thanks. Goodbye. Good luck. <laughs> All right, what is it? <laughs> well, I just realized we came way down here for the baths, and we haven't been anywhere near them. <laughs> well, we may not have taken advantage of the baths, but as Nero once said, Tudura est Tudura clianorum. Which means... We certainly took Mr. Rexford to the cleaners. 